must be prayer. People that don't pray don't have any power. They don't see any results anywhere. It just becomes a social thing with them. You've got to pray. So if you don't pray, there won't be anybody sent, right? Look at this. He said uh, in verse 14, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in it? Whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be what? They got to be sent. <laughs> oh, glory to God. You look at somebody and say, I, I'm sent. How many believe that every one of us have a ministry of reconciliation, reconciling people with their creator, telling them about Jesus? And, and praying. We may not all go to places and preach, but wherever places come to us, we preach to them. Amen. If I'm on the job and a lost person comes up and I'm on break, I'll preach to them if they ask me. Come on now. If I'm on the street and, and the Lord leads me to somebody, I'll preach to them. Well, I'm just a servant doing what he's supposed to do. Come on. How can they hear without a prayer? How shall they preach except they be sent? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and being, and bring glad tidings of good things. Oh, how can, they, how can they do it unless they be sent? Look at Acts 13, if you will. I'm going to show you how they're sent. Acts 13. Well, I wish somebody would send somebody to my family. They won't listen to me. Well, what's wrong with you praying that the Lord of the harvest send somebody to them? Come on now. <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing, and, and I know not y'all, but some people, they just think all the responsibility is on God. Well, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. This is exactly true. But you know, after we get saved, we got responsibility on us. God said, I'll do this if you do that. He said, I'll do this if you do that. He said, ask and you shall what? What responsibility is that? Jesus don't pray for us. I mean, he's a great intercessor in heaven and he prays for us, but he doesn't do the praying for us. Now, when we pray in the Holy Ghost, you know, we can pray in the spirit and, and God through uh, cooperation with our spirit. He can pray that way, but I'm not telling you, everybody don't speak in tongues, it's saved. You know, everybody doesn't everybody doesn't pray in tongues all the time. I pray in tongues a lot. I prayed in tongues yesterday. I probably pray in tongues more than most of y'all. But most of the time we do the praying. Amen. Come on now. We do it. Jesus said, when you pray, not if you pray, right? When you pray. So the responsibility is on us to pray. And if we've got somebody lost, we need to pray that God will send somebody to them. That God will open their eyes because 1 Corinthians 2, 14 says, but the natural man receives not the things of God for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually they discern. Another place, Corinthians said, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. I can pray that blindness off of. If they got a will to be saved, I can pray that blindness off of them. I can pray and I can put people in their paths. I can send people through prayer. God will send people through my prayers and everywhere they turn around, somebody's witnessing to them. I mean, they're trying to be comfortable in their lost condition and in their sin, and every time they turn around, they hear somebody witnessing to them or something, every channel, every channel they turn on, they see Christian television. I saw a drug dealer. I saw, I saw a drug dealer one night on television testifying. He was about to blow his brains out. I mean, he was a big cartel leader. And every channel he turned on, the preacher was on it. The same preacher, he changed the channel. Had 84 channels, I believe it was. And every one he changed it to, the same preacher was on there saying, you need Jesus. Somebody somewhere was praying for him. You say, what if nobody in his family was saved? God raised somebody up in Africa praying in tongues. 
It's God's will to save people. It's God's will to heal people. It's God's will to deliver people. It's God's will to bless people. 1 John what is it, 5, 7, beloved, I above, oh, there's a third John 1, 2, third John 1, 2, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. Well, I tell you, I can pray some stuff down. Woo! You say you're bragging on your prayer. No, I'm bragging on my God that said, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open unto you. Hallelujah. He taught me how to pray. I got the Holy Ghost in me. He's a teacher. He has taught me all things. Amen. Hallelujah. I know what works and don't work. I know that when I pray, there's some working going on. <laughs> oh, glory to God. The works of the Father's being carried out. Mm. Let me read this. I'll show you how it works. Show you how the system works. Some of you say, well, you know, I just, we just pray. We just shoot it out there like a shotgun. No, no, I know how to pray. I've been in this a long time, and you know how to pray. You don't pray like a shotgun. You're specific when you pray. God saved the whole world. <laughs> well, who had the world you want to be saved? Are they, in, are, they, are they in America? Are they in South Carolina? Are they in Africa? Where are they at? That's good to pray, Lord, save the whole world, but you need to get out to some specifics where you get off of that stuff, you know, just throwing shotgun out there. Huh. Look at Acts 13. Woo! I'm having a good time. Raise your hand and say, Lord, I'm glad you're here today. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, have your way. Woo! Acts 13. Now, they were in the church that was at Antioch. Certain prophets. Antioch, Syria. And teachers. They were certain prophets and teachers at the church. Somebody say at the church. They wasn't home prophets. <laughs> they wasn't home apostles. They weren't home pastors. They operated in the churches. If it was a house church, if it was a church, whatever it was, that's what they operated on. And there was in the church now at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Serene and Manan, which had brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul, and they ministered to the Lord and fasted. How they ministered to the Lord? Oh, there's a worshiping God. There's a, there's a thanking God. There's a worshiping. They enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. Hallelujah. You, they, they, there's certain protocol the way you enter into the presence of God. You just don't go busting in and say, Lord, I need, I need, I need. If you're desperate, sometimes you might get away with that. But you go in, worship him, and thanking him for what he's already done. You say, well, my life's messed up. I, I'm in trouble. Hey, I've been there, done that, but I thanked him. Glory to God. It could have been worse, but God, you're going to bring me out. God, I'll allow this stuff happen now, but God, you're going to bring me out. I praise you, I thank you. And they were, they, were, they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, and, and the Holy Ghost said, Look at somebody say, the Holy Ghost talks. The Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work we're into what? I have called them. What were they doing there when that happened? They were fasting, praying, ministering to the Lord, and the Lord spoke.